Amid the concerns about rising cases, we could see a fourth vaccine approved in the U.S. Let's bring an epidemiologist, NBC News medical contributor, Dr. John Brownstein, for more on that. Dr. Brownstein, uh, good morning to you. AstraZeneca's vaccine is reportedly 79% effective against symptomatic COVID and 100% effective in preventing hospitalization. So what do those numbers tell you about this vaccine and how does that compare to the other three vaccines currently approved in the U.S.? Yeah, thanks, Diane. I mean, these new results are incredibly exciting. It puts AstraZeneca in the company of all the leading vaccines that we now have on the market. And just to break things down, um, this was a large trial, 32,000 subjects, about two thirds of them received the vaccine, uh, two doses, four weeks apart. And we only saw about 52 events in the vaccine group compared to 89 in the placebo. And the vaccine group was two times larger. And so overall, we saw 79% efficacy in, in this uh, trial. And um, this was uh, taken from participants from Peru, Chile, and the U.S. Um, and it showed strong protection in older groups across race and ethnicity. So a lot of a variety in this trial compared to potentially other trials that we've seen with AstraZeneca. And the big sort of top line finding is that there were no severe cases, no hospitalizations or deaths in those 50 cases in the vaccine group. So that's all incredibly exciting. I think it's an important fourth vaccine. That being said, 50 million doses will be available by the end of April. We'll already have enough doses of vaccine across the other three vaccines to get to all of the adult population. And this is why this vaccine really is important globally. Um, the fridge storage can last up to six months. And so it really means it's much more durable than the other vaccines. So as we think about really ramping up vaccination across the globe, this vaccine is gonna be incredibly important. Of course, we have to look more into the details of the studies, but overall incredibly exciting. Now, some other countries stopped using the AstraZeneca vaccine because of concerns they said over blood clots. What's the latest on that? And do you think this newly released data might help improve confidence in the vaccine? Right, so what we've seen in the EU that um, there was this concern around uh, the potential association with blood clots or abnormal bleeding. Overall, the EU has now uh, released this vaccine back on the market. Um, it that association was shown uh, to not exist or at least uh, maybe just add a warning on top of the vaccine. So the, the vaccine is now back on, but there's still sort of remaining hesitancy because of that scare. And so you add in this FDA potential approval, that will go a long way to reducing hesitancy. Um, in the trial itself, we saw no increased risk of any adverse events and no risk of clots, no excess risk of thrombosis in the 21,000 people that received the vaccine. So even though the vaccine has already been approved in 70 countries, FDA clearance could really add uh, to sort of bolster enthusiasm for this vaccine. And in countries where they have yet to approve it, they're going to be looking to FDA. And so as we think about rolling out this vaccine and trying to get it to as many people globally as possible, these results are incredibly important. And I wanted to get your take on these images we're seeing of spring break in Miami, people crowded in the streets, partying, et cetera. Do you think measures like curfews will help? And how concerned are you seeing these images? Yeah, you know, on one hand, you can understand that people have been locked away for a year and need to get out. Uh, you know, we're well beyond the point of pandemic fatigue at this moment. On the other hand, we know that Miami has some of the highest test positivity rates in the country at 9%, and we know that they have the presence of variants. So you mix in mass gatherings with no masking or social distancing, that's going to potentially create unnecessary transmission and, and unfortunately potentially a surge in cases that really could be preventable. We've spoken a lot of times about it. it's not all or nothing. It's about slowly, gradually reopening. This is not a gradual reopening. And yes, vaccine rollout is going incredibly well. We've got 32% of adults have at least one dose right now, but that still doesn't cover the vast majority of adults and especially those that are high risk. So, you know, right now, you know, not the moments to, to let our guard down as every death really is preventable by these vaccines if we can just let them do their work. All right, Dr. John Brownstein, always great to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.